What's up guys, my name is Dari and I hope that you're having a great day. In this video, I want to start off with a mini project where we'll create a CRUD REST API for our authors. So if you're interested in supporting this channel and you want me to continue on creating tutorials, I have created a Patreon where you could get subscriptions and you will get more benefits such as a private Discord group where we could help each other out. Pretty difficult to maintain all the questions that I'm getting through Instagram and YouTube and even though I'm trying my best to respond to all of you guys, the private group on Discord will be very beneficial since we can help each other out. Laravel has a pretty cool API resource functionality built in that can help you to transform single resources and collections of resources. In the next few episodes, I want to focus on a bookstore where we have authors, books, and users. In this video, I want to specifically talk about the authors controller that we had in the previous video. By now, I expect that you guys have a decent understanding of Eloquence since we're going to use it right now. If not, I have a 45 minute video where I go in depth on Eloquent, which could be pretty useful for you. Since our authors controller is a resource file, we are using a cross type of application. So inside the index method at the top, we're basically going to print out all authors. And in order to do that, we need to have the same approach as the show method. So what we're going to do is to return the authors resource, colon, colon, collection. So we're going to make a collection, which is a method. Now inside the parentheses of our collection, we can perform a query to get all authors from the database. So let's say author, colon, colon, all, to get me all authors. If we save it and go to Postman right now, change the endpoint to forward slash authors, click on send, you can see that we're getting a 404 error message. And this is happening because we haven't defined the route. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's open the api.php file. And what we could do is to copy the entire route, paste it right below, change the endpoint to forward slash authors, and change the method to index. This is not something you want to define for every single route that you have. So we could easily use the resource list instead of defining every single endpoint. So first let's remove both paths that we have. And right now let's define a new one. So let's say route, colon, colon, API, capital R of resource. It's a method. In here, we need to define the endpoint. So let's say forward slash authors, comma. Then we need to call the controller. So authors controller, colon, colon, class. What I usually like to do is to double check and to see if everything works fine. So let's hop to the CLI. And in here, let's write down PHP artisan route colon list. And let me zoom out for a second. All right. And right here, you can see all endpoints for the routes that we have defined. And as you could see, we need the index method. So the name is authors.index. The endpoint is API forward slash v1 forward slash authors. And it's referring, so the action, to the at index method. Let's test it out in Postman one more time. It is a GET request, and the endpoint is good right now. Let's click on send, and as you can see, we have pulled in all authors that we have. So ID number one to ID number five. I hope that you like the pace that we're going at. In my opinion, it took a couple episodes to get used to APIs, but right now we're going very fast because it's getting more familiar to you. Now that we have found out how we could show a single resource or all resources from the database, I want to take it a step further by creating a resource. So how does this work? Whenever you create a block, you basically need to have input fields where you enter data and then you want to send it back to the database. With APIs, we need to send a valid resource object to the server that will hold the type of member of the resource as well as the attributes. Let's test our routes first before we see if it works. The method that we're going to use, if we look at iterm, so we're going to create a resource, is the store method. The method is post, the endpoint is API v1 authors, so the same as the index page, but the verb or the method is different. And it's calling the store method. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's open the controller, and let's scroll down to the store method. And in here, let's just return a string of test. Save it, go back to Postman, change the method to post, let's send it, and as you could see, 
test has been printed out and the flow of our API works fine. So right now we're ready to create our store method itself. First, we need to create a new author. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's get rid of everything inside the store method. We need to create a new variable called author, set it equal to the author model, and we want to create so the create method. Now inside the create method, we want to pass in an array. And since we only got one input field that we need to add, which is the name, we need to set name equal to John Doe. Now outside of our array, we need to return something because it's creating something right now. And what else? We want to return this object that we have created. So let's say return new authors resource. And in here, we want to pass in the author that we created. So let's do that. Save it. Open Postman. Click on Send. And right now, you can see that ID number 6 has been created with the name of John Doe. Now, if we go back to Visual Studio one more time, you can see that it's pretty static right now because we're defining John Doe ourselves. What we could do is to call our faker class. So let's go right above author. Let's say faker is backslash faker, backslash factory, colon, colon, create. And inside the create method, we need to define the amount of faker classes or rows that we want to add. So let's say one. If we get rid of John Doe inside our create method, we could basically say, well, get me the faker and search or create a new name. Save it, go back to Postman, click on send, and as you can see, ID number seven has been made with a faker name. Obviously, this is a very simple create function, but in the next video, I want to add more validation. So now that we have created a resource, it's time to update a resource. And whenever you want to update a resource, you can easily do it by grabbing the ID of an author or resource. Let's test this down in iTerm. Let's go up and right here, we need to perform a put or patch method. The endpoint is forward slash authors. And well, we need to update something. So a specific author where we're calling the update method. So let's do that. Let's go to Visual Studio Code and scroll down to the update method right here. We already have an author because we're grabbing it from the endpoint. So we could say author update. And inside the update method, we want to add a set of brackets and we want to change the name to, let's say, Dari. Then we want to return a new authors resource and we want to pass in that author. Save it, go back to Postman, excuse me. We want to perform a put request or method to forward slash API v1 authors and we need to define which author we want to update. So let's say number one, let's send it. And as you can see, number one has been updated to the name is Dari. And remember, this is the author that we created through Tinker. And as you can see, the created at and updated at have been updated as well because it was null since we created it through Tinker. Now this is pretty static as well. So let's change it up in a different way. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code and let's get rid of Dari. And what we want to do is to call the request because it's a param as well right here. And we want to call the input method. And inside the input method, we want to say, well, search for a key with a name name. I know that we haven't defined an input field somewhere since we have no UI, but let me show you how you could do that. Let's save it. And let me remove the semicolon. Let's open Postman. And right inside the params tab, we can define a key. So let's say that we want to update name and we want to change the value back to code with Dari. Now the name of the key needs to be equal to the input field that we have defined right here. So let's send it. And as you can see, ID number one has been changed back to code with Dari. Another cool thing is the URI because you can see that a question mark has been changed where we set name equal to code with Dari. And this must be pretty familiar to you. Now the easiest method is the delete method. So let's hop back to Visual Studio Code. Let's scroll down to the destroy method. As you can see, an author has been passed in. So that's something that we don't need to do anymore. 
what we just need to do is to say that whenever the destroy method is being called, let's say that the author needs to be deleted. So delete. What we want to do next is to return a response of null, so empty, with a status code of 204. Let's save it. Let's go back to Postman. Let's get rid of the params. Change the method to delete. So we want to delete author number one. Let's delete it. We got a 204, so a no content. Now, if we perform a get request on all authors, number one must be deleted. So let's check that out. As you can see, it starts with number two. That was it for this video. In the next video, I want to add some validation and stuff before we continue on. This was it for this video. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.